Welcome, Mr. Donny Miller. How are you, man? I'm okay, Si. A little bit of a head cold. Uh, you know, typical Melbourne winter. Everyone's getting sick, including me. Yeah, it's been going around real hard. Has it been hitting the gym? No, the gym's been good, actually. So pretty lucky there. Yeah. yeah. So for the people who don't know, and I'm sure most people do, you run Superfight Gym around the corner just from here, from Ziggy's? Yep, certainly do. Been there 10 years now. Uh, it's a great little spot. Always something happening around uh, St. Kilda. Yeah. Mm. Where were you before um, the current location? Before uh, Inkerman Street, I was at Chapel Fitness. Yep. And I also in 2001, 2002, I opened my first gym, Superlect Gym in Clayton. Oh, really? Um, and I was also in High Street, Paran, where I met uh, Keith Grant. Good mate of mine. Yeah, Keith. He sent me a message abusing me for not sending him a birthday message yesterday and I'd send it to his stories. I'm like, <laughs> happy birthday, Keith. Happy birthday, Keith. Hope you're sober. The years aren't treating that man well. <laughs> um, what got you into coaching? Like, was it a smooth transition from fighting or um, were you coaching and fighting at the same time? How did that all come about? Yeah, pretty much the same time. Started in New Zealand. Uh, had a young... Uh, for one of a better word, street kid living with myself and my partner at the time. He wasn't getting on well with his, his uh, stepdad. Uh, that was around 95, 96. So I was actually trained him in my garage because he couldn't afford to go to the gym that I was at. Yeah. And uh, he, had a, he fought for me as well. So that was very, very early days in NZ. Yeah. Um, Which city in New Zealand were you? Auckland, yep. South Auckland. And I was at Partai Gym. Yeah. Uh, Utai Pornicom was my trainer. He's pretty well known. Um, yeah, and I think it was around... I went and fought in Japan um, late. It was November 99, and I went over with Ray Matsumura. Yeah. And um, on the plane, um, we'd been mates for a little while. Uh, my guys had fought on his shows. He used to run Bo Explosion? Bunchu. Yeah, but his fight shows, was that Explosion? Uh, I think he did Explosion yeah. later on, yeah. So he said, Don, you, you, you know, I like the way you train, you're passionate about Muay Thai, and ever thought about being a coach as well, yeah. opening your own gym. So basically, maybe a year after that, that's when I sort of went out on my own. So did you start training Muay Thai in New Zealand or here? Uh, in New Zealand, yeah. yeah, 94 started. And that was the gym you just mentioned, was that your first gym? Yeah, Pa Thai Gym was the, the first gym that I went to, yeah. proper Muay Thai gym. I had some good fighters there. Alan Drew, uh, Angus Burrell, Todd Keedwell. They were probably like the second best gym in uh, all of New Zealand. Right. Mm -hmm. And what was the best gym? Well, basically, biggest and best would be Liga, Liga. Liga yeah. City, Liga Balmoral. They just, you know, they had the monopoly on it and, yeah. you know, all the superstars. And did you fight mainly in New Zealand or did you fight when you fought in, you were training at Dana's here too, yeah? When yeah, you moved here. I came over here. I was with Dana in uh, 97. I fought for him in 97, won a Aussie title for him in July, was with him in 98. And then I moved with Ron Parr when he came over to Marvel Martial Arts, Peter Lewis's oh, yeah. gym. So I was with him for a little while as well. Yeah. And uh, then a few years later, I went out on my own. Yeah, and when did you start going to um, Thailand and training and fighting? First time in Thailand was uh, March, April 98 yeah. uh, with Darren Reese. He got me set up over there and we were living together there for about five weeks. Which gym did you go to? Uh, Sang Morakot, yeah. Nakhon Thong Park View. Uh, yeah, so I was over there. That was my first trip in 1998. And then you... you Got to know Sang Tien Noi? Yeah, same year. Um, possibly a bit later in the year, I met him at the weigh-in for Tarek Solak's show, yep. Thailand versus Australia. That's right. <laughs> I met Sang Tien, who I already knew about. He was, a, you know, an idol. Legend. I met him at the weigh-in, and uh, after the fight, he gave me the shorts that he beat Marcus Mangan in, signed them, and uh, then we just became mates after that. Yeah. Um, going from training in New Zealand and then going and having your first training trip in Thailand, what was like the most striking difference? Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't prepared. I thought I was uh, just getting up at 
five twenty in the morning and hitting the road and and trying to get up and do twelve k's before the sun comes up in Bangkok and just the volume of training hours and hours and clinching forty five minutes with high ranked ties you and know. you were fighting lighter so you would have had a lot more guys around your sort of size yeah. and stuff then too what yeah. weight did you fight at featherweight 57 yep. i think the highest i fought was 61 in perth on uh on a show i can't remember the name of the show it was jeff divine might have been the opponent um and i think blair smith was on the undercard of that one that would have been 97 or 98, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You would have been 57 and Blair would have been 89. <laughs> yeah, I think it was 76 from 76, memory. Yeah, yeah, super middle. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've gone over there and you're training and obviously now one of your main things that like your gym, you always have is like train like a fight, train like a tie to fight like a tie. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you were training with a tie back in New Zealand, right? And mm-hmm. how different was the way the, that he ran the gym compared to what you were doing there? Was it just a matter of volume or the yeah. structure of the training? Part tie gym, he moved around like Auckland, you know, but it was the same. We had a few little ties in the gym and it was maybe 20, 20 to 25 students, pretty much all of them were fighters. Yeah. Whereas nowadays it's the other way around, yeah, you know, yeah. it's 90%, you know, fitness and fun and, you know, 10% fighting yeah. so everyone was a fighter you basically sparred whoever all the top guys on your first day yeah um, first week I was in there I was sp- sparring Alan Drew <laughs> and uh, I you know I fought I trained for five months then I had my first fight yeah. so yeah we got we got in there early and yeah was I'm, the scene quite big uh, in Auckland it was yeah. There's a big Thai community there um, there was ties everywhere so there was a show on, you know, every month, a good quality show, really good fights. Yeah. I actually remember going to a show in West Auckland before I joined Partai's gym. And um, I remember these guys, they all had the green and yellow shorts on, with kind of Aussie colours, and uh, their, their guys just smashed everyone. And I was like, that's the gym I want to, you know, they had yeah. a Thai trainer, and that was it. I was hooked. So um, he, Partai trained us very hard. He was a hard man himself. He was still fighting, um, you know, on weekends. He was fighting, out, you know, outside of Muay Thai at <laughs> the, the, uh, the Islander nightclubs, notorious in Auckland. So he was, uh, he was a character, that's for sure. Yeah. And when was your last fight? It was here? Last fight was... I officially retired like that last fight in Japan, but I ended up, Ray called me three. I think if you're a Muay Thai fighter, you're never actually officially retired. Yeah. You're, you're always going to get sucked back yeah. in. You might get a phone call from me. Yeah, Ray rang me uh, 2003 and was asking if, um, if I had a featherweight. And uh, at that time, I didn't have anyone, but I was like, I'll do it. I want to go back to Japan, <laughs> which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so that was my last... Was that Muay Thai or Kickboxer? Muay Muay Thai. It was the same guy that I fought in uh, 99. He was the old Japan featherweight. I can't remember his name. Uh, He beat me twice. Um, First time we fought was 55, and the second time was 58. Shit. Um, Those guys were very serious. They trained full-time. That was... uh, Trying to remember his name. Oh, I can't remember. It'll come to me. Uh, the the he's a big Muay Thai Japanese promoter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, ended up going back to Japan about six times. Yeah. All up with, with myself and a few of my students fighting there. Yeah. Um, who was the hardest fight you ever had? Probably the tie that I fought in Raja. He just played with me like yeah, you know, it was a different level. Yeah. I had about eleven fights at that stage. Um, yeah, definitely. Skill level wise, uh, that would be my hardest one. And then possibly the fight in Japan after that. So over the last 20 years, and something I think we talked to Riddler about as well, the experience of people going to Thailand and fighting then compared to now, it looks like it's changed a lot. Back then, if you went to Thailand, you basically you fought really hard fights. And Definitely. you got thrown in the hard end, whereas now it's sort of become like training tourism. Mm-hmm. And people go over there and they have wins over Thai fighters that aren't what yeah. you know, we'd consider 
Yeah, like back then, if you fought Raja or Olympani, you had to be from a decent gym yep. and decent enough to get on the card. Um, whereas now, you know, you can have not trained Muay Thai at all and, and go over there and find out about Muay Thai in Thailand on your holiday and two months later you're in a ring fighting in Phuket or Samui or, you know, Chiang Mai. Yeah, which makes it hard. Like as a promoter, we get guys who've had nine or ten fights in Phuket not the single out Phuket and then mm. they come back and they're like they've had 10 fights but then you put them in with someone who's a first time or a second time who's only trained here and they actually struggle with them and it's just getting that yeah that that getting it clear to people that if you do have some of those fights I'm, I'm not saying legitimate fights but they're not a fair standard where a fight is going to be here yeah I get guys because I'm in a um, sort of backpacker area St Kilda yeah. around the corner from you so I get a lot of internationals in and phone calls almost every week saying, hey, uh, I want to come in and train. I'm a fighter. I'm like, okay, where have you trained? Oh, I've been in Phuket three months, four months. They come in and they're just, uh, you know, they, they're basically intermediate level. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there is obviously two or three really good gyms in Phuket. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Sing Bai Tong would be the main one, I'd say. Yeah, uh, they, they've and got our friend Tim Fisher's got Tim's, Now Revolution that used yeah. to be Sit Song Penang Phuket. Yeah, we were there last year um, at Tim's gym. That was good. Yeah. Did a tour there. Um, there's definitely good fighters there. Yeah, I mean, obviously Rafi's in Phuket. Yeah, um, Rafi's been there a while now. Damien Alamos was the uh, Chad's now there. He's fighting for the title next week. He is, yeah. For the WBC title at Lumpini. Yeah, so but, that was originally going to be the Lumpini title. Um, the word on the street was that the stadium didn't want two foreigners fighting for the title. Yeah, that's fair enough. Things have changed in the last 20 years. Yeah. Uh, like even if you think about it, Raymond Decker, how good he was. And he fought so many golden era legends he only got a shot at Lumpani title once yeah with uh i think it was isara sakarin i think so now it's a bit different you know it's have, not that hard have you seen the guy chats fighting the uh, boy Lewis? only uh, only like snippets on social media which is is not really he's not on there that much um but it's it's a good gym i think yeah from what i've heard they've got good fight club yeah so they've got a few guys ranked and in the sort of top 10, top 15 in WBC. And he was, um, I think, f ranking and fight, fighting at super welterweight. Yeah, he's but, a bit bigger than Chad, but um, Chad's just going from strength to strength. Yeah. Uh, he really wants it. He's training like an animal. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I put a little side bet on, on Chad, so hopefully it pays off yeah because Chad was here training with Clayton and then moved to Sanctions he yeah. went there w when Sam Bark was there yeah yeah Chad fought some old students of mine years ago I think it was I think it might have been Shepard and maybe Matty Reed he fought, he fought Richie, Richie Fanus, I remember that fought, and fought Richie and, yeah. and that was a war yeah, um, yeah I think he dropped Richie in the first yeah. round or something with a head kick he and dropped him with a push kick to the face kind of a yeah and, uh, Richie got he, he broke Richie's nose and Richie got up and then just you know did what does what did what Richie did just Wore got, him out. got stronger and uh, yeah, it was a good fight. Chad was only seventeen and then after that he he fought Sam years later on uh, Chris Bradford's show. That's right, top yeah. tier. Because yeah. I remember he was we were all blown away and I went up to him and his I don't know who was it? I don't know if Clayton was with him and uh, about getting him on the show and I realised he was seventeen and they they really yeah, cracked down on right. the age thing so we couldn't get him on for ages and then eventually he came and fought yeah. on Road to Rebellion 4 I think against Roy Wills oh, at Red right, Scooter yeah. Yeah. and then he came back and fought Singh Payak and um, Sam on Prestige that's right and yeah. he fought uh, Curtis didn't he fought Curtis in between that time Curtis Stady up I'm not in sure. Queensland he might have in Queensland yeah. yeah and I think he fought Alexi as well he fought Alexi yeah. on Chris's show. I yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's people forget he's still really young. Yeah, he's, he's he's fought almost everyone. So, but he was just here. Always one of those guys that everyone sort of knew. Yeah, was around the top. Yeah, and took all the hard fights. And I remember when he fought Roy. Um, after the fight, it was the only time I've actually had to drive a fighter to the hospital because Roy, just being Roy 
kicked him so hard and he said oh i think both my arms are broken that's right yeah but i remember helping him into the car and the whole way he was like holy shit i just fought roy wills he's my hero and uh we got to the hospital and uh, they said i oh, nothing's broken you have extreme deep bruising <laughs> like <laughs> That's yeah. Roy. Roy could kick hard. He fought two of my guys. He fought Joel Fisher on your show yep. at Albert Park. I can't remember the year. Yeah, that was um, Rebellion Muay Thai 4 in 2012. Ago. And then he fought Sam at Malvern about four years ago, yep. four or five years ago. But uh, Roy's got the best, best right kick in Australia for sure. Yeah, just cracks it out. Yeah. I remember when he fought <coughs> Sing Suri. We got to the point where it was just like... <laughs> How many right kicks is he yeah. going to land? He was yeah. just like, crack. Every time I looked over, it was another <laughs> right kick. Yeah. Uh, legend of the sport, old Roy. Um, and I'd going back to Chad, I'd probably, in my opinion, on the planet now, he'd be definitely number one welterweight. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's just, he's a, he's a fit, driven individual. Yeah, he's really motivated. Like we were, I was trying to get him on July for that world title and this opportunity came up first and I think to win a world title at Lumpini you get, like that's a much yeah. much as much as I love my own show it's such a great opportunity but he's so keen he's one of those fighters that's always asking about it and getting the matches and stuff and it's really good to see for him to do it and I think he realizes it's not a thing he can do for the next 30 years he's got a time span that he's going to make it work and Definitely. he's doing it and he's gone to Japan and he fought on shoot boxing and he's won both times so it's just like a kid loves to bat fight I'm trying to remember Chad's last loss can you remember no I can't remember either no, I think that he had a draw in France oh that's right but that was the last loss that I, that's the, not, the last not win that I can think mm -hmm. of going back to Sam Bark he's now uh, he fought a few fights Unrebellion, he fought out of super fight mm -hmm. and now he's transitioning to MMA, which is, you know, it's not <laughs> our favorite thing in the world, but, uh, uh, but it's good. Like he's still fighting and he's got the passion. Yeah. Um, how did the whole relationship with Sam come about? Uh, I got an email years ago from Sam saying uh, he was a teenager, he was moving to Melbourne and he wanted to come and train with me and I was like, no problem. So he turned up with uh, a couple of his mates yep. um, and they all lived in my loft at the gym and Sam, yeah, he was 19 at the time and he'd had about maybe 10 amateur fights under his belt in Sweden and uh, yeah, he was a good kid. He, he, he trained hard, you know, he loved eating and uh, he went and did his fruit picking and then he came back and he fought Eden Sayadi. Yeah, on brute force at... Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it uh, chases. Chases. And that was a fight, I think, Eden had knocked out a few guys he and did. was on a real tear. And yeah. everyone just, I remember, it was one of those fights where they put it up yeah. and everyone was real dismissive of Sam and Sam yeah. just handled that fight. Yeah, he handled, he did a 10 kilo weight cut in seven days to, to make 62 from 72. And uh, yeah, he beat Eden fair and square. And then uh, he had to go not long after that. Yeah, he was matched to fight on the only show I've ever had to cancel. It was meant to fight on the road to Rebellion. Yeah. And he was matched, and then when that show got canceled the week out, I was meant to have Daddy Cool and uh, the Italian boy. I keep forgetting his name. But that was going to be the main event. But I remember Sam was matched on that, and then yeah. he got canceled, and then he left after that. Yeah, he left. He, uh, <coughs> I, We had a good chat. We got close. I told him to go train with Sancti and Noi, um, you know, being friends with Sancti and for years, and sort of, I said, if you can stay there a year, you'll be a name. And he ended up staying about three years. And, you know, everyone knows who Sam Bark is. Yeah, and he just stayed, he fought a lot on uh, Max Muay Thai. Yeah. Smashed, knocked out a lot of dudes. Yeah. And then he came out and fought Roy here. And then he, he was back and forth between Australia and yeah. Thailand. Yeah, he Had some big Roy, fights here. Roy, Tum, Alexi, Chad, Eden, uh, Jamie Stamp, and uh, Jack 300. I think that was, yeah, was about eight in of them Perth, yeah. yeah. His fight with Tum is probably one of my favourite yeah. fights ever in Rebellion because mm -hmm. it was 1.30 in the morning by the time the fight finished and the energy was so high. It was such a close fight. Yeah, it was a great fight. It's one of my favourites for sure. Um, Sam and Roy Wills and Sam and Tum were yeah. my top two. Yeah, great fights. Yeah. Good to see Tum back soon. 
Yeah, fighting yeah. Alexi, which is... It's like, well, I always say about the West Australian fighters, but over the last three years, I think Alexi's basically stepped up and fought everyone Definitely. we've put out in him. He's fought everyone um, except, you know, maybe Tum and a, a few other ties. So, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kind of both local boys in a way. Tum's kind of local um, yeah. outside of Thailand. It's his second home. And so. he just fought um, Singdam on the Yokia show yeah. in Sydney. That was surreal. I, I was sitting there watching him and, I, like I said to him, like, I kind of felt almost emotional because I remember on the second Rebellion Muay Thai, he fought one of our boys, Josh Shalevsky. And I remember he'd had like three fights and it's like Rebellion number two. Yeah. And all these years <clears throat> later, I'm sitting there and I'm in mean, Singdam's past his peak, obviously, but yeah. just sitting there watching yeah. him. And he was, you could see he was like relishing this opportunity to be in there with like a legend. Yeah, and he, he just went at him the whole time. I mean, yeah. know, it's hard to deal with someone like Singdam. Oh, but for sure. The guys had about three, four hundred fights all up, and uh, he's a different fighter than Tum Sing Dum, but um, probably a little bit bigger. But Tum's just sort of very tricky, uh, good eyes, um, younger than Sing Dum, and it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a close fight, I reckon, because Alexi's going to be in his face the whole way. Yeah, yeah. So on that card coming up, we've also got uh, Ramesh rematching Jordan Godfordson. Yeah, that's going to be a good fight. Um, Ramesh has been on a tear, uh, a good striker, definitely the number one guy here at that weight uh, division. And Jordan's uh, one of my favourites. He's I like his style. He's a tough, strong boy, good clincher, in really good shape. So, um, you know, R Ramesh needs to be on his best that night because, um, you know, it's. I, I predict the fight will be even the first few rounds and eventually they'll end up in the clinch, so that's where Ramesh needs to be careful. But it's definitely an even matchup on the paper. Yeah, it's, sure. I mean, I think the first time they fought, Jordan was definitely, the Ramesh was definitely stepping up to Jordan. Now they're a lo lo lot more on par. And Jordan's definitely. one of those guys that I think doesn't get as much recognition as he should around yeah. Australia. Like, he's, he hasn't had the chance to fight for a, like a WMC Australian title because Lloyd Dean's had that. Yeah. And because of the way the rules are set up, you can't have two guys in the same state fighting for the belt, which can be good because mm -hmm. it stops a lot of silly business. But at the yeah. same time, I think Roy, Jordan, and uh, Lloyd, Lloyd have been the top three Definitely. junior welters in yeah. WMC. And now they're going to fight for that WBC Australian title, which yeah. is I'm excited about. And then today we just announced Jake Lund fighting Compad Lake Fairtex mm -hmm. for the world title. Mm -hmm. It's going to be um, a good fight. At that light one. heavyweight. Yeah, 79 kilos. Yeah, which is actually now becoming an interesting weight division in Australia. Obviously, Jake, Dave Penn and Pete. Charlie. Charlie, yeah. Toby, all those guys yeah. around that weight. So, Yeah, uh, I, I've only seen Jake a few times. Um, not, I've never watched him live. Um, so we'll see. This, I mean, the tie's pretty good. He's, he's a big tie. So we'll... We'll see how he handles rounds, uh, later rounds three and four when they clinch up. Um, it's going to be good. Yeah, Normally yeah. don't like watching the bigger guys, but you know this to, to have a tie that size too, and he's lean at that size. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good, good, to, good to see. He's he's tall and he's a, he's quite thick. Yeah, and he's a former WBC champion, former Raja champion. I think he lost his title to Yusuf. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really looking forward to it. Coming up currently with the fighters you have at the gym, who's the name to look out for? Uh, well, we've got little Tommy based, uh, Tom Cannon based at Sit Mon Chai yep. with PA. Um, he's been there two years exactly this week. So he's wrapped up 23 fights in total. He's fought 17 of them in Thailand. Nice. His size, and he's got one more, I think, next week. Um, he would be the main guy, but on ground here, I've only I've just been rebuilding. There's a few new guys coming through. Uh, the main fighter would, is a female, Tiffany Lam. Mm. We struggle to get fights for, but also uh, it's hard to pin down because she works and travels a lot. Yeah. Um, so we'd like to try and get her, see her more on the Rebellion shows. Yeah. So we're, we're hoping to see her on your show in November. Uh, 57 kilos uh, she just won gold recently at the WMO uh, in Bangkok and um, yeah Tiff's doing well she's uh, got 
just if, if you haven't seen Tim fight there's a few of her fights on our YouTube channel from Roots just Beautiful, beautiful style, style. can sit back and counter yeah. fights really well she just can win going backwards yeah, yeah. She's really good eyes had good Thai trainers from the start I think she's nine fights for eight wins but she looks like she's had about 20 yeah uh, also with Emma Graham from the pits come over from yeah. Perth she's living in Melbourne now and we're struggling to get her fights because she's fought everybody so she's she's raring to go um, she's a current WMC Aussie champ mm-hmm. um the boys, we've got some new guys coming through. We've got a kid called Mally Hill, who's actually uh, flying out to Mackay tomorrow morning oh, nice. to fight one of uh, Nuxu's uh, guys, uh, boy, Premier's yep. boys. He's had five fights. Nice. And it's a late, late, we got the phone call about four days ago, so Mally's keen to go up there and have a crack. Yep. He's he only, just missed out on the last show. His opponent yeah. got sick, so. Yeah, he, if he stays at it. short notice. Yeah, we've got. A couple of guys, we've got um, Chris Mackay at 79. He's had a couple of fights. Tom McCutcheon coming through. you got um, female Sam Bark now, Julie. Yeah, <laughs> Julie. We've got a, a young Julie who just had two fights. Um, she's someone to look out for next year. She'll be uh, fighting on hardcore promotions in August 24 when she gets back from Norway. She's yep. off to Norway tomorrow for six weeks. Um, and then she's fighting uh, either on Hammer Show early October, yep. and the Border Town Show, yep. Terry Show over in South Australia, and then she's coming on the tour to uh, t- the Super Fight Tour to uh, Santai Gym, yep. Chiang Mai, September for two weeks. She's going to fight over there, nice, and then hopefully um, uh, Roots November to yeah. finish off the year. Yeah. yeah. Looking back um, with all the fighters you've had, obviously guys like Joel and mm-hmm. Mike 300 and Richie and mm-hmm. uh, Nicole, who's been the top fighter in your eyes that you've had? Uh, as far as maybe he's fought everyone and he was just a tough, tough guy uh, in a hard weight division would probably be Mike 300. Yeah. Fought a lot of big name ties. He fought a lot of big names, you know, like Toby Smith and um, John Tong and Cy York and yeah, Superbon yeah. and Detrit, uh, you know, uh, Kampan on your show. Yeah, won by knockout. Yeah, he won by knockout. Yeah, that was a good venue. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, Skill wise, Joel Joel. Fisher, very smart. It's a shame he he retired, but you know he he had a good run. He had about 40, 45 fights, I think, and a couple of MMA fights, <laughs> and some MMA yeah. fights, which you try to talk him out of. <laughs> we both did, I think. <laughs> I think we were at his uh, AFC fight when he fought Jordan yeah. Lucas, and we just looked like the yeah. unhappiest people in the room yeah. until until Birdie walked up and yeah, um, the hardest. I mean, workhorse wise, um, Nicole Brolin. Yeah, that girl was amazing. She, she just she had about thirteen fights one year. Won this eight girl tournament in Queensland. She beat pretty much everyone. You know, she beat Kaylee Lewis twice um, in a row as well. You know, and which is you know no no small feat. You know, yeah. in itself. Um, fought in Thailand a lot. Queen's birthday. She ended up having about. 40 something fights as well she's talked about coming back a whole bunch of times hasn't she (laughs) yeah she's not coming back Um, and Richie everyone knows Richie Furnus he was just a a workhorse big heart Um, yeah so there's some good guys there for sure over the years there were I guess there's no real favourite but it was they're all good in their own way yeah you know I mean like you said I think you think about Mike 300 and he was just, he fought everyone, mm-hmm. got in there, fought Elliot Compton, who's, you know, on one championship and ranked. He fought Campan, uh, mm. Sayok, all those guys, Toby yeah. in the eight man fought Toby in Queensland. Twice, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Eli Madigan. Yeah. Uh, Eli, yeah. And then you had, um, obviously, like you said, Joel, I think technically was just phenomenal. And Richie was just tough as hell like I think his fight with Gary Cairns and one of the rebellions it's oh, still one of those fight. fights where it's one just of my like favorites, yeah. the first two rounds I was sitting I ran into the back chain because I was like I love Richie and I was so worried about him and he came back and he just kept going and ended up taking the win and his 
last fight on Rebellion um, against Abbas was another fight that was just yeah. like those two guys. Just Very close fight. Crazy. Could, yeah, definitely. Um, got a new generation coming in through, so I backed off a little bit from putting all my effort into the fighters because I've got to spend more time running my business. But yeah. It's worked out quite well. I've got some good trainers with me. Andy Ford, who's one of my old fighters years ago, who um, lived in Thailand for a while. Yeah, He's great. Uh, Dean Williams on pads, really good technician. And Big Sam Cassidy, they're my three pad holders. So I'm, I'm, I can leave those guys with my fighters and I'm, I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, being involved in the scene in Melbourne, obviously it's in New Zealand for so long, what have you? What's how have you seen the shift in the way Muay Thai runs in the state, and then I guess nationally, um, as far as because it feels like over the last few years there's a lot more gems, there's a lot more ties trainers now in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. I know we've recently had two pad holders come in the last few weeks. Yeah. I think there's another trainer arriving today. Um, there's probably eight or nine gyms with Thai yeah. trainers, but also a lot of ex fighters and a lot of. Um, trainers that have just slowly yeah. come through the scene more Muay Thai promotions we, we used to be a kickboxing state and I, I don't think yeah. we are as much that's why I struggled to get Muay Thai fights back in the 90s when I was with Dana it was like you were fighting once twice a year it wasn't enough yeah. so you know um, there's definitely more trainers around there's more Thai trainers around there's more gyms about five of my ex uh, students now run their own gym some of them are running shows like yeah. Mark Chelsea um, Keith Grant, Andrew Colgrave, O'Neill in dominance doing really well. They're all, uh, you know, most of those guys are former uh, students and champions of mine. So Melbourne's, uh, it's a force to be reckoned with now in the Muay Thai scene. And having those ties in Victoria uh, only pushes it forward. I just feel like in the old days, I just, you know, the guys weren't as picky and choosy about taking fights. They'd all we just jump in, yeah. Um, put our hands up. We wouldn't. We didn't have social media. You know, one of the, my pet hates is my students trying to work out who they're fighting on social media, and I'm like, don't look at it. It's my job. It's a trainer's job. Kills me because you look at it and then you start questioning yourself. And uh, back in the day, we didn't even have mobile phones. We would just we just fight whoever our trainers put us yeah. in with. Whereas yeah it's a bit different now these days I think in that respect well you get guys who are even having their amateur fights and stuff now mm-hmm. get on and stalk and check and everyone's got like pad videos on and everything yeah, and it's yeah. like yeah. we've had it a few times where guys have they've, they've been matched and then it's like oh this guy's had all these fights it's like have they was it the same photo yeah. but, but also on the same token it's kind of taken a little bit of the and they're very far and few in between, but it's taken a bit of the, uh, some, some of the trainers and Jim's sort of misrepresenting the fighters' experiences out too, because you'll get a guy going, oh, it's his first time, and you click on their Facebook profile, because I add everyone so I can tag him into the post, the yeah. promotion. It's like, well, your cover photo is a fight that you had in like... Definitely. <laughs> in yeah. another country. It's like, <laughs> you can't yeah. lie about it. The trainers just need to be honest, you know, like mention the amateur fights they've had into clubs are not really that important but definitely mention the am- amateur padded fights don't forget to mention the fights you've had in thailand as well um and yeah just be honest because in the end of the day you you know you're only hurting your your fighter really yeah. by building them up yeah it eventually catches way. up yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and it is it's like i've seen guys in the ring having an amateur fight even with Oh, I know he's had like 30 boxing fights yeah, and man. having a K1 fight against the guy that's been training for three months and the trainer hasn't mentioned it and you just see it's like that kid with the three months of training might be disheartened by this yeah. and never coming back to this and you just ruined somebody's definitely who could potentially have become something in the mm-hmm. sport so yeah. it, it becomes a real challenge um, I know one of the things that's probably close to your heart that you've always talked about is uh, the scoring and judging in Muay Thai mm-hmm. how are you seeing that develop um here locally it's an ongoing battle um i think it's improved definitely um we got some ties here now but i think uh, most of the other officials are uh, sort of catching up with them i it also depends on the rounds of the fight and what level the fight is Mm because i don't score in my mind, the three rounder, like a five, three minute rounder pro yeah. fight with two, you know, experienced uh, fighters. 
So I, I, I'm very Thai sort of traditional sort of s- scoring style sort of routine is like I score the whole fight. Yeah. And Not, that's, yeah. I think, one of the things that people misunderstand about your stance and a lot of people's stance mm-hmm. about Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think that um, because of the gambling thing, saying 10, 10 rounds or whatever, mm-hmm. they're not understanding that the fight is considered a whole fight. Mm-hmm. And it's not just about giving it two rounds yeah. even to make the gambling interesting. Yeah. Obviously, the gambling at the major stadiums influences the way things are done and the fighters fight. But the idea is that if the fighters, the whole fight is scored, not what we do, which is based on and we have to adhere to that, is the round by round yeah. by round scorecards yeah. handed in. I mean, I, I say to my students, I, you know, if you split the fight in half, I'm not too fussed if you lose the first half, if you come back and win the second, mm. because they're the, you know, it's how you finish the race, not how you start. Um, three rounders, I tell my guys, just go out there and go for it. Yeah. Um, you know, five rounders, you have to kind of start slow because... If you start like it's a three rounder, you're going to be in a world of pain by round well, four. It's like, it's kind of, I hate cricket, and I don't know why I use this analogy, mm-hmm. but it's like being a batsman in test match and going out like you're doing big bash cricket and just swinging mm-hmm. for every shot and yeah. going out early and you've got no batsman left. And it's the same. It's Definitely. Like, yeah. Don't give it away and don't get knocked out in the first two rounds. And obviously, the judges here have to score the rounds, but I think when they're told that doesn't matter what, you have to give the round to somebody and the yeah. first two rounds, especially with experienced yeah. guys who don't go yeah. balls out the first two rounds, you can split the round. If you it's not, give it, it a draw. And yeah. Make your notes on, on the pad with, yeah. your, with your pencil. Put a plus with the guy you think might have, be a bit smarter or nicer style or who evaded or blocked yeah. most of the, um, the attacks from the other corner. And then later on, at the end of the fight, you can, if it's still close... You can go back to the start and go, okay, well, you know, he was the better of the two in this respect, but yeah. it was so close, wasn't uh, wasn't any point scoring those early rounds, like you know. So I mean, I think unless there's a knockdown, there's no, if there's nothing much happening, then you know, why why should you be forced to make a decision yeah. on a, on a winner or loser on that round if it is a draw round? So, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, one of the other stuff that always comes up is what scores um i I think it's overly simplified if people just say kicks and knees score because Mm -hmm. sometimes knees aren't strong sometimes kicks aren't strong sometimes punches hurt people and they need to be done but i Um, think for sure i like to compare it to the ties um and if you've and if you're training your students properly you should be training them like the ties it's muay thai so they should be kicking and kneeing a lot and learning how to clinch properly how to defend properly how to throw so um yeah a, a weak kick no it's not going to score but yeah. if it's to me a weak uh, weak kick and a weak punch the punch is, has a glove on the end yeah 10 ounce of padding and it's um you know a kicks a, you know it's your leg it's a stronger part of your body so um i mean i like my guys to try and out kick or out knee or out clinch their opponents but sometimes you'll get a student who's a natural puncher um like sam like sam he can hit and um so you have to tell them to go in and, and use those weapons as well. Yeah. Um, if, they're, if they're visibly hurting their opponent and moving them backwards or buckling them, then you score that. Yeah. Um, but going back to the ties, they're so well trained, they're so experienced. If, if one tie is punching, it's normally the end of the round and he's losing. Losing and he's, and he's going he's, for the knockout. He's going for the knockout, he needs a count and he has to, he has to catch up. Or he's a, that's his style, like Anuat. He's yeah. a puncher from round one, and he'll you know he'll put people away. Yeah, yeah, and that's I think one of the sometimes some of the gyms talk about why do kicks and boxing and all that stuff. Clean punches do hurt people. Getting punched under the arm and getting kicked under the arm with a bare shin is different. I always say, different. Yeah. would you take a boxer and put him in a kickboxing fight? Yeah, no. Who's wouldn't. never kicked? Because no, because the kicking is going to be a massive mm-hmm. advantage and it can nullify the punches. Yeah. And then you know people go, oh, "What does kneeing and clinching count?" So I was like, "Well, we know how many often we try to get kickboxers to fight Muay Thai rules, yeah. and they don't want to clinch because it, it can be a very dangerous weapon. So that moves it along, but it, it is becoming, I think." more people are understanding it mm-hmm. and 
part yeah. of it is not just the officials like you said it comes down to the trainers yeah. explaining it to their fighters why they win and why they need to do the things they need to do not just say go out and put in work because like Definitely. work rate's not a yeah like you said punching the arms 50 times around it's not really gonna it doesn't look good it's not really pure Muay Thai um, against someone who might go backwards like Tiff Tiff's a good example mm. um, she'll go backwards they'll you know their opponent might punch she'll they'll miss half of them the other half will land on the arms or yeah. the gloves and then she'll throw some nice body kicks um, to score to get the points up yeah so I think that's maybe another one that you know guys like Singh Payak people mm -hmm. don't understand sometimes it's ring generalship which is kind of a boxing MMA term that sneaks mm -hmm. into it but it doesn't just mean being in the center of the ring if your style is to stand yeah. on the ropes and fight that way yeah. then you're controlling the ring the way yeah. you want it to your fight it's yeah. not just the Singh and Spencer would be you know you've got two different styles yeah. there, and you saw what happened to Spencer's uh, ribs on yeah. uh, was it the Yokel show yeah, yeah yeah not this one the one before yeah yeah um, that's a good example with your if a student walks in and they've had no training experience before how do you how what's the progression for them to start at your gym and end up fighting, having their first fight? Um, they've got to do the beginner class and it all depends on how often they get in. So they can do six of those a week if they want, yep. morning and night. And then it's, yeah, we'll just see how they go. It might take six months or it might take a year. They'll be in the intermediates. And um, so the intermediates where they'll start sparring more and doing more clinching, that kind of thing, more pad work, telling them to run. So if the kid is, um, you know, young enough and got enough natural talent and he works hard, it could be a year before he's training with the fighters. Yeah. Could be six months. How long do the fighters train every night? Uh, doors open at five, so they usually wander in between five, 5.30. Yeah. And they're usually out of the gym about quarter past eight, so they finish up about eight. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and everyone trains the same time. While the beginners are training, the, the, the fighters are, are clinching for yeah. 30 minutes. Um, Saturday, it's, it's more of a happy sort of all levels kind of class. Tiff takes those most of the time. Uh, if the fighters want to come in, they'll get there early. When you say it's a happy all levels class, I assume you weren't taking I'm it. I'm not there, like yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's getting whipped with a bamboo cane. <laughs> um, yeah, and then Sunday. Sometimes I'll make my guys train Monday to Friday, Saturday run or a day off if they really need it, and yeah. then we'll train Sunday, probably two weeks out from a show. Yeah. So they're training Sunday as well. I just feel like it gives them that sort of mental edge for some of the guys. That time. How often do you get them to run? They should be running every day. Yeah. Um, and weekends, uh, Saturday, they'll run. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that people always sort of talk about training fighters um, some people talk about is, mm -hmm. is different pad holding styles and there's the calling out call, calling out technique by the pad hold and then there's a freestyle mm -hmm. um, I think there's room for both yeah and depending on the <coughs> experience level of the fighters yeah where do you sit with that um, there's a difference between Thailand style freestyle and what Westerners think is that the same thing because you have to have the right proper flow there has yeah. to be a rhythm there. Um, I find it, hold it easier holding pads for ties because I've been holding pads for 20 years and it's not like I'm just holding the pads up and trying to guess what's coming. Like, uh, we already know what's coming because yeah. there's that rhythm, rhythm before it in place. There's a flow going. And uh, I, I, I call out, you know, usually in Thai so they learn a little bit of Thai, what mm -hmm. the strikes mean. Um, and then you do that it's over six months to a year it's it's second nature you know what i mean it's yeah. um yeah you, you have to call them out um at the start as well you yeah. know with your combos and some guys can pick it up fairly easily some can't so um but the good pad holder makes a big difference in the gym yeah yeah not um yeah i've seen some guys think they're doing freestyle here in australia but it's just set combos yeah yeah I, I feel like when they're just 
um, throwing them like that, they're not putting enough power into their power shots, like i.e. kicks and knees. It's like, blah, blah, everything is just all about work rate. Um, yeah, so that's when they need to ch- switch to the other way and call them out and do the same combos over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, in Australia at the moment, who are your favourite fighters to watch fight? In Australia? Um, well, I love Roy. Love watching Roy fight. I miss um, Roy. Yeah, we miss you, Roy. Yeah, he's a Perth boy now. Uh, in Melbourne, um, I really like. Uh, he's from Eight Blades, Quan. Yeah. I like watching him. Always, um, always. Yeah. Just a war when yeah. that guy fights. He's calm. He sticks with his style that he's been taught from yeah. boy. Is to get in nice and close. Good leg kicks. He can also clinch. Um, yeah, he's one of my favourites. Um, another kid that I've sort of been watching is um, uh, there's a couple of kids actually. Kahal, yeah, Kahal Lee. He's only had a handful of fights, but if he stays at it, he's 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 got lovely style for a guy who's only had half, less than half a dozen fights. Yeah, he's only I think he had four fights. His fifth fight was against Van yeah. and then his sixth one yeah. was on against yeah. Isaac the other week yeah. and it's just yeah. he could fight under 55 kilos but he's having to fight 57, 59 because yeah. we just don't have that many adults yeah. at that way <laughs> for sure also Van is really good I like what, he's come a long way yeah. um, he's nice and relaxed he's in shape good technique um, Alexi you know we all love Alexi he's uh, you know I'm talking about the new guys. Um, yeah, Isaac. Yeah. He, he, he's very... Last fight I saw him uh, on your show with Cahal. He looked really good. Um, enjoy watching. It's mainly the little guys yeah. um, that I like. Another guy I liked was um, Ilioski. Yeah. Alex Ilioski, who's... I think he's retired now, but really enjoyed watching him. Very smart guy. Very nice mm-hmm. style, good balance, good composure. Just yeah. one of the guys he fought on Rebellion One right up to, I think, last year. And it's just one of the guys that I always yeah. wanted to just see him go all the way. Yeah, so he's, if he ever comes back, it'll be yeah. great. But just beautiful style for a yeah. guy at 72 kilos. Oh, great style. Al- almost perfect, you mm. know, almost perfect. We've got a few um, highlights of him catching kicks and countering with jumping knees and stuff yeah. and you just watch him and it's just flawless yeah. flawless yeah um internationally obviously you watch the Thai scene quite mm-hmm. closely who's your uh Superlek would be Superlek Kyat Mugal would be probably my favorite fighter I've been following him for almost 10 years yeah um I went and watched him at Lumpani when he fought Tanam Chai Hong when he was with Sancti and Noi I yeah. watched that live and that was just we're trying to get him out in November yeah. I know it's past his prime but yeah. I, I still would like to get him out yeah. of here he's a good boy definitely Superlek um, yeah he's he to me I mean Singdam's nephew to me he's he's got everything he's just his his perfection uh, his balance the power that he can generate in his kick his jab he doesn't he doesn't need to do any more than what yeah. he does you know but he's just mastered his, that whole gym. Rungnarai, he's awesome as well. Um, and I love that gym because they're homegrown, you know. Yeah. Um, another kid I've been watching is from Sanctians called, uh, what's his name? Kong. He's 16. Uh, he he's, just fought he on just, the weekend. Yeah. yeah, he's ranked number one in his weight division at Lumpani. Yeah. Um, uh, or it might be Raja, I can't remember. Same, same. He's really tall, like for his weight. He like, fights at 52, 53, and he's yeah. about five foot eight. So he's um, he's one to look out for. That was a well. scary thing when Lamdaman was out and seeing how tall he was. Yeah. And then I'm going, Jesus, you fought it well under 60 kilos. It's crazy, isn't <laughs> it's it? It's disgusting. Crazy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was kneeing the pads, and it's like, this is a 48 year old man. <laughs> Yeah. And then he was at, uh, I made Andrew Parnham's gym and Andrew sent me a message straight after someone going, holy shit, how does it yeah. I'm like, imagine that dude at his prime. That would have been a nasty experience. Yeah, he's a uh, machine, that guy. And he's still, he's still got it. Yeah. You know, he's still got it. Yeah. 
So what's be coming up in the near future? We've got a matchup for Tommy that we'll announce tomorrow morning. Uh-huh. It'll probably be announced by the time we get this out. Um, uh, and what else is happening? You've got the Thailand trip. Yeah, we've got the Thailand trip, which is for all levels, yeah. September 13 to 26. Um, we've got about eight or nine people signed up already for that. Nice. So I'm looking forward to going to Santai Gym. Yeah. I've had a few. My wife's even been there. A few of my girls have been there. You've got a really strong women's sort of yeah, program yeah. there. Yeah. So um, looking forward to doing about 10, 11 days up there. Nice. Um, a couple of days in Bangkok shopping and Channel 7 on the Sunday. It's not ruined by having to spend time with Andrew while you're there, is it? No, Andy's going in July. So <laughs> so I'm on a good trip. <laughs> we just got back from a trip with Andy, uh, yeah. the Parnams. And you've Conmo. been sick. Yeah. <laughs> and the guys at his gym are all sick. Thanks, I'm Andy. just saying, yeah. Yeah, Chop got sick. Um, Iram, we were all together for the, for the weigh-in. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, next thing you know, we all got... We all, it must have been the vineyard afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just looking forward to Roots, yep. getting the guys back on uh, and seeing Tommy fight back here. Rebellion, I can't yeah. even remember who his last fight was here. but I think he fought Van. Van? It was a draw. Van? Yeah. yeah. Um, Tommy's fighting uh, 23rd at 55 kilos, yep. um, which he can make, but I think 57 is going to be his, it's his most sort of Strong, strongest yeah. weight. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we're just hanging out for the shows coming up. Your one, Rebellion. I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to the Hardcore show, <coughs> August 24. Then Hammers in October. Hammers October on. 3rd. Uh, then we've got South Australia um, in uh, late October. And then the tour. So, but you're not yeah. focusing on fighters at all, are you? No, that's <laughs> it. <coughs> we've got Mally fighting this weekend and Mackay. Are you going up? No, 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 I'm going to Wilson's prom tonight. Right. Yeah, I won't be in the gym tonight, so, yeah. Awesome. Taking the wife and kids down there for some camping. Nice. Yeah, so gym-wise, gym's doing well. Um, beginner classes are humming along. Got a lot of intermediates in now. Um, yeah, morning classes are running. They're still pretty quiet. Uh, yeah, it's not kicking pads in the morning. I've yeah. got to kick pads with the wrong in 15 minutes. Oh. And without that weather this morning, I'm just like, I want to wear some shoot boxing pants with the lishing guard over. <laughs> with, the, with or without the cod piece. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> uh, everything's good. We, you know. um, yeah. Awesome. All right, Danny. Thanks very much for coming in. No um, problem. My pleasure, Sai. And Super Fight Gym. Uh, in St. Gilda on Inkerman Street yeah. it's on Instagram and Facebook you can't miss it we've got a lovely uh, fresh art put up by Baylor yeah on, on the, the front, front door, door. Yep. so it's just right on the corner of um, Inkerman Street and Brighton Road St. Gilda Road in St. Gilda that's the one yeah. awesome Danny thank you so much thank and you, uh, we'll see you soon thanks mate take care we're going to do a photo alright coffee